So my name is Lisa Wilkinson and today I'm sharing for Helmar and today the product that I want to focus on is Helmar 450 Quick Dry Adhesive. I'm using this because it's fast. I'm also using it because it's perfect for the different mediums that I will be sharing today. Um, let me share what those mediums are and what you can use Quick Dry for really quick. Quick dry can be used on acrylic, buttons and embellishments, canvas, chipboard, cardboard, flowers, fabric, paper, felt, ribbon, fabric, metal, paper, photos. It's washable and you can also use it on wood. Just a huge amount. Um, what I love is it. it's clear, dries clear, it's acid free, it's fast drying, and it doesn't um, warp the papers for me. So that is, um, it's about time I shared this too because I've shared some other glues on some other videos and this really is my favorite. So I've gotten to my favorite today. Um, when you get the bottle, you'll have to open it up like this and you'll see there's um, not one of those fancy pull ties, but I still think there's these little edges and I just, I might do better with these than those pull ties. I wish you could see my face because I'm smiling right now because I always mess those up, but um, just pull it off and slip the cover back on. I um, always store my 450 upside down and I will note that I used this on a project recently to make candle votives and just as a precaution I didn't have any issues because it had dried but it does say extremely flammable so I did not share that project yet because I'm not sure if that was a good idea but I will say um, it dries so fast that I might put one of those this is way off topic but those little non flaming candles like the battery operated kind inside <laughs> but this um is perfect as you can see it says right on it and i believe it a strong bond that lasts a lifetime my favorite things to do with this is pull apart my old scrapbook pages and find all the things that have fallen off and literally i should have done that and fixed a scrapbook page um it's just helped me um, go back and see that my pages are now stuck for good. <clears throat> All right, so today I am going to demonstrate a really easy um, burlap flower. And you can see these flowers have so much layer in them, but they're really an easy design. In my craft area, I keep normally a lot of punched circles. You can see these are just circles. I punch them here with my EK Success. I think I got these, yeah, from Stamping Up. Um, I can turn that around for you. And I uh, will often punch a whole bunch out of really cheap paper. This is just um, cardstock that I use for homeschooling in my printer. <clears throat> and we'll punch a whole lot and just keep them around for projects like this and then I'm not always cutting more I have some laying around so if you have a little place um, for me I have one of those uh, making memories carousels and I just stick them in one of the pockets of the carousel I have just punch shapes like this <clears throat> so you only really need two to make this, um, these are one and three quarter inch circles. You could certainly do one smaller one and you won't have to trim. And actually, for one that I did recently, I actually cut a burlap circle and then used this to continue cutting my circle so it has a burlap bottom. You can see this has white, but you could do a burlap bottom too. <clears throat> All right, so. I am grabbing a stack of burlap. This is very thick. You could use any kind, thin, um, any fabric. You could do this with paper too. The reason I wanted to do it with burlap is because 
I like flowers a lot and I wanted to show that you could use them on a male page and how to make them a little more masculine. So that's why I'm using um, burlap today. So you're just gonna place your, your punch shape on your burlap. Normally I'd use my Fisker scissors, but it's the strangest thing, they've disappeared and I don't know how many of you might have seen, if you're friends with me either on Facebook or um, know me personally, you might know that my sweet four-year-old put gum in her hair yesterday. And so I'm just praying she's not also the one that took off with the Fisker scissors. So you can see you're just gonna cut, um, I use five, I'm using a five petal um, burlap flower. So this again is one and three quarter inches, we're gonna cut five. I think burlap is great. Um, it's inexpensive. I actually got this, um, a whole lot of it at Walmart. Someone had bought it and returned it. This is how I buy things. I'm just gonna grab. I had a very large um, amount here and I ended up getting this, I think for a dollar or two, just in the return section. It's a great place to find things. Now it might not have originally been the thickness I wanted, but you certainly couldn't have beat the price. And I have a lot to create all sorts of different projects. <laughs> Doubles, yeah. I The Fisker scissors, I'm thinking now that my girls are sewing too, that I might need a, a double set of those. So one, two, three. Put another one here. And I'm just really rough cutting these. Um, I'm gonna show how to make a folded chevron today too and you just wanna be a little more careful with that. But with this, there's no right way. And I like when it has the frayed look. Okay, we need one more. I love how I'm not, um, spending any extra money, I'm just using what I have in hand. It was an awesome price. I think so often today I get jealous when I see all of these projects and they use these fancy cutting machines and all of these things when I really can't go out and purchase those things. Instead I just try to find a project that uses something I already have. You can see how beat up this punch is. I've had it for several years and um, Instead of, you know, cutting these, some people can do that. I couldn't, so this was a way that I could still make something like this. This burlap is very messy. So what I'm gonna do first is take my circle, and like I said, at this point, if you wanted to use a burlap circle, that would be fine, or a smaller circle. A one inch is about as small, maybe, as I would go. Um, I'm gonna use my 450 that's about half gone and put this one aside. And I'm just gonna put a little in the center here. Maybe a little more than a little. But I don't wanna come all the way to the edge because I do wanna be able to, um, I think that shows up nicely, cut around if I do not like the look. Now I'm gonna take one of my circles and I'm gonna pinch it in on both sides. Oops, I hope you can see this. You're gonna pinch it in and flatten it out, just like this. And before I put it down, I'm actually gonna show you, this really helps. You're gonna put a little 450 in the middle. And then go back and pinch again, just like this, and kinda of hold it for a second. And then you're gonna set it down right off of that middle piece. And just hold it for a second or two and you don't you don't want it to be like really stuck down so it's okay if you if it bounces back up a little when you put something in the center that will help hold it even better so there's the first kind of layer now I'm going to repeat this five times around the circle
some pieces just fold so nicely and other ones like to fight a little more. That one folded really nicely. When I made my sample, when I was gluing my own fingers to the flower, so I'm trying not to do that this time. This glue is pretty good. It could glue your fingers down. Okay, so two more. And you could certainly do this with four. Um, it kind of depends what look you're going for. I personally like it a little fuller, so I chose to do five. These flowers are really easy. I'm so glad you said that, that you might be able to do them. I really think, um, like I said, you can do them with paper. I did them with a light fabric and they were even simpler. This um, burlap is a little stiffer, but you can see it's just tucking, folding, and placing. It's quite an easy flower and um, it looks so nice, like something you would have purchased in the store, but you're really just making it yourself. So you just want to place them all on until you get the look you want. And then I just pull off any stray pieces here. I like this nice fringed edge, but I just pull off any pieces that are kind of um, in the way. You can see all the way around you have that nice layering. And then in this one you can see where the white hasn't been trimmed and you can see it a little bit around. So you just want to take, once it's completely dry, your scissors and just trim around. You don't have any glue around the outside. And I've um, already threaded this. And how I would apply the button down is I would grab my, I'm just going to reach over scrap dots. I love my scrap dots and um, put a big glob which this is the one that actually got stuck. I'm demonstrating with my wrong scrap dots. Okay this one needs, I tested this one this morning I said oh no this one needs a little help. This. I got the top stuck, so I just need to peel a little of that off. It's okay if that happens. Don't panic. You haven't ruined your scrap dots. They're still nice and liquidy in there. I just take my scraper here, and I just scrape the top off a little bit, and occasionally I do need to put a little piercer in there if I've left it open. For these um, live demonstrations, I've left my glue open a few times, and that is not good. But normally just put the cap back on when you're done. Okay, but here, here's the right one. And we're gonna go ahead and put a big glob and I'm gonna show you how big. Now this is great, it dries clear and you will not see it under that button. I put a really big glob. I love when one of our other designers, I think it was Kate, said it looks like um, Dairy Queen ice cream. Well, I don't need a Dairy Queen, but I do love soft serve, and I think it does look like a soft serve. Not that eating a Dairy Queen is bad, I've just never really been very much. And you can see I'm just pushing it ever so slightly. I'm really not pushing it down. I want that big, thick um, glob to stay. Now, this is going to need to dry for a few hours for me to feel comfortable with putting it on my page, um, especially since it's so, so thick. Can you see? Probably not, but it's so, so thick in there. There, now you can kind of see. So I'm going to set this aside and let this dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to go ahead and trim the back of this white, and then I'm going to place it on my page as a finishing touch and photograph my page. But let me do something else for my page. Um, so this is the burlap flower. Does anyone have any questions about this particular flower with the burlap? And maybe um, on my personal blog, I'll also show one with fabric. 
and one with paper. But I gave away the card I did with fabric, so I'll have to make up a new one. I don't mind. So you can see what they look like in different kinds. <clears throat> it still looks boyish, don't you think, Cheryl? Like not too feminine, but still is a flower, which I love. Let me just clear my station here. Also on my page, I wanted to do something um, like a chevron design, and I was trying to decide if I wanted to use a chevron paper or make something of my own, and I decided I would love to make my own um, chevron. There's a few ways you could um, make chevrons and they're really popular and you could probably find lots of papers with chevrons on them already. But let me show you a peek at the layout I've been working on. That I'm gonna put together. It has a really neutral blue background. Um, I can show you the flower against it too. See, so this flower is going to go on this page. Also, I wanted to put something neutral or kind of tone on tone. So this is just a lighter shade or a little different shade than the background paper. And I said I really like something long kind of underneath my layout going across the page. So that's how I came up with, I'm gonna show you today how to make a folded chevron, a large one. So what I cut is um, one strip of paper. This is two inches by 12 inches. You do not need to um, make it the size and you certainly don't need to have a double sided paper you won't see the second side in your chevron but this is the side that I want to see so what you do first is measure one inch in now a lot of rulers are one inch but these um, are some basic wooden they're a little more than one inch across so I'm going to measure one inch in I'm using a Creative Memories photo labeling pencil, um, which is really my favorite for this kind of, okay. Then I'm just gonna use that as a line. Oh, I forgot to measure the other side. I'm looking for my other line. I don't, like, okay. Measure in on the other side, same thing. You kind of have a line there. Now the next thing you're going to do is measure, oh that's a little low too, I'm just going to draw another line. Pretend like the first one doesn't exist. Now what I'm going to do is use the ruler and at every one inch point, I'm gonna draw a line one way or the other, down or up. So I'm just gonna mark one inch marks first. So the first line I'm going to draw down, and since my pencil's not, um, my tip is not good, is why I'm having to <clears throat> go a little below my lines here. Now they're lining up perfectly. 
And these are your cut lines. So after I'm done, I'll show you that. I know it's probably hard to um, see. I apologize for that. I will hold it up just as soon as I get these lines drawn. What's great about this is no one sees the back, so even though it's not perfect here what I've done, it's okay. No one's going to see it. So now it looks something like this, like with lines every other way. Now I'm going to cut into those. Now I'm going to start in the middle and fold both of my um, corners in. I probably should have cut down just a little bit more. There. I'm going to use, um, I can't find my bone folder, and it's kind of convenient I have one of these around anyway, my glue spreader as um, kind of a bone folder here. and use it to even out my edges. You can see the difference when I used my glue spreader and when I didn't. I'll show you up close. This is a little roughed up because I was using my fingers. So I've used this a little more often. And then you're gonna go down right below and do the opposite here. Pull these up. Just using my glue spreader. Just evening them out like that. You can see if you flip it over now, you've already started your chevron pattern. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the top here and do the same thing, just um, one more time. And just using my glue spreader, evening it out. Now this is nice, unlike the pinwheel I did a few weeks ago, you really do wanna have um, as even as you can because it will affect how nice your chevron is on the front. So can you see how the chevron's coming along there on the front? Okay, you're gonna do it again over here. I have to keep training myself here to use, I like to work with my fingers, not necessarily to get me messy, but with my paper, distressing and ripping, and this is kind of a neater, Thing, so I'm trying to remind myself to use the glue spreader as I'm working here. Because I will like the look so much better if I stick with it. All right, and then down to the bottom again. And so pretty much you're creating just a very large, um, easy chevron. <clears throat> and you're just gonna fold in this side on the end. When you get to the end, you're gonna have one side you just fold back in like that. And that will finish off that side of the chevron. 
Now, what's wonderful about quick dry is in between all of these spaces, I like to just um, put one little kind of um, squirt. And it just sticks just like that. It didn't even take, um, you know, adhesive on both sides and everything like that. You're just doing one little squirt. I am addicted to liquid glue now. It's hard for me to think about going back. You don't think you've seen this before, Cheryl? I'm so glad I'm showing something new. I'm hoping for those who were not able to make it today because of the holiday week, they'll be able to watch this and maybe it will be something new they haven't seen too. So um, I'm gonna continue folding, but you get the idea I also love this because even with the adhesive and it stuck down, it does have, I wish you could see the lift off of the, the table here. It does give a nice lift. I had a craft paper. I cleared it away. I wanna put that back underneath. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I do think there's less of a glare with that. There, does that show up better? You can see the shadows, yeah, you can really see it lifts right up. And on the page, I'm actually going to apply it with scrap dots. So we'll continue to give it a little lift, but kind of a tone on tone look. So let me finish up this one. So what's great about this is if you didn't have a chevron paper and you've been wanting to try the technique and um, didn't want to spend any extra, you might already have this glue spreader or something like it, a ruler, a two by 12 inch piece of paper, and you can try chevrons too. Um, this is also great if you um, scrapbook kind of the whole page. I'm more of a um, white space scrapbooker, but um, if you're using the whole page, this is a great filler, I think. There we go. Almost done here with this one. pushing into the corner there to get it as even as I can. I'm gonna flip it around and do this last corner. Finish that chevron off. And here is um, a really fast, easy chevron. Now, you can see here on this page how it would just fill the whole page up for you and I think that would be really cute. You could do the whole background if you wanted them all the way down, make your own chevron paper, or you could just add it you know, somewhere in your um, thing. You also can make these smaller. You can make them as small as you want. Um, you could certainly do a one inch by six inches, I think would look lovely, and then you could use that right on a card or um, an art journal of some sort. Um, <clears throat> so that is my chevron. <laughs> Lastly, I thought I would just take this. Um, I hope I don't feel like I'm rushing today. My time's a little shorter today, so I hope I haven't rushed through anything and that I'm describing everything really nicely um, and that hopefully I'm teaching some things that are new and different. <clears throat> I'm just going to grab my page and show you what I've been creating these things for. This um, paper, if I could just go back to that, is from Crate Paper Storyteller line, which I absolutely love. The colors in that line and the patterns. Um, kind of a traveling through life collection. And a lot of what I've been using on my pages um, are from 
that collection and today actually everything that I'm using on this layout is from the June hip kit from um, hip to be square scrapbook company they do monthly scrapbook kits and I've been blessed to work with a couple of them so I am um, creating with those and I've already kind of pre-cut some paper strips. Most of my layouts start with some kind of strips like this. Um, in this case I just started with a cardstock base, um, chose three patterns that um, coordinated but didn't look um, too matchy matchy and added another piece of um, cardstock. From there I added, um, these are all the rage, these really sweet little sacks. So I have a sack here and I cut this, let me show you really quick. This crate storyteller paper is actually, let me see if I can find the name. I don't know if I know the name of this one. Um, anyhow, it's just a one piece of paper with a lot of tags. So you can see where this one is missing here. You can see one says my story. So this is nice because no, it didn't come with a lot of extra little bits and pieces, but it came with one sheet like this that I could cut apart and make my own embellishments from. And I'm all about that. As you can see today, I love to make my own embellishments, use what I have and try to just make it into a little bit more and different um, in our, our small budget. And I think that you can always find things to do that aren't going to cost a lot. Um, with what you already have and pick up some key pieces like some good glue, um, a few good lines of paper and you can make a lot. Now these shouldn't buy all sorts of embellishments. I love those too. But um, let's see. So this picture actually went into my project life that I shared before. I love this photo. It captured my son perfectly and um, I decided after looking at it that I actually wanted to make a page of him alone um, with a scripture verse about it not being about um, strength or power but by God's spirit um, and so that this page would be just kind of a reminder to him just the look in his eyes and the way I felt about him in this picture I just wanted him to know it's always about God. So that was what that was about. So anyway, I am scrapbooking it all by itself and not just in my project life, which has not happened yet. Most pictures that went into my project life are everyday things and not, um, not such nice pictures. I save all my nice pictures to do layouts. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my scissors again like I showed a couple of weeks ago and just distress the edges a little bit and it makes a really loud, annoying noise when I realize when I wash the back. This page, I'm not gonna show the titling because I'm gonna do some stitching first. Um, but when I put the titling up, um, I'm actually going to do something I don't do very often which is a very long title across my page and I'm going to use three different let me just show you really quick sorry three different um, alphabets so I'm going to use this jelly bean soup these thickers and these thickers and again these all were the June 2012 hip kit from hip to be square these all came so I'm going to use them all and have fun with that. And I love how they all match the page but aren't matchy-matchy again. All right, so to do this quick, you'll never believe what I found. I said last time I was out of um, quick fix adhesive runner. Well, I was, but I found a refill on the back of my desk buried under a bunch of other stuff. Please tell me I'm not the only other one that has a desk that's disgusting. 
and I'm going to use this for time's sake to put these down. Just finding. I have this piece I'm not going to distress, so it's going to go behind. Yeah, you don't want to see my desk right now. It's sad. I hope everyone has a messy desk. Doesn't that mean we're creating something? I was um, getting upset with my little ones about cleaning up their room. And so one of my older children looked at me and said, Mom, when you clean up your scrap room, we'll clean up our bedrooms. Oh, it was bad because I knew if that meant I had to clean my scrap room, they might not never, ever, they would never, yeah, they would never clean their rooms again. And I'm gonna roll sometimes and leave that so it's open like this. And I'm again just applying a little and not too close to my edges. I'm going to machine stitch this, and I don't know if I've pointed this out before, but I try not to go too close to the edges when I machine stitch, just because um, I don't want any glue. This is good glue, and I do not want it to be on my needle. So I'm really careful to kind of stay away from where I think I'll be doing um, the stitching. And I love stitching um, not for uh, keeping it down, but for look. So my stitching, I'm not reverse stitching, so I still do want my good adhesive down. Um, someone had asked me last time, and I saw the question late, and I didn't respond to that, but about stitching and glue. And I think it's still important to have your glue down because I'm stitching, I'm not reversing my stitches, I'm not doing a tight stitch. Um, I'm really just stitching for the look of stitching. I also do things, I'm going to pull this page down for a second, where I keep the strings and put them on my page. Well, obviously then this could all be pulled out if I didn't have a little adhesive behind that. Cheryl, thank you for keeping me company today. Oh, I do. I, I love the runners. I think they're easy and I especially like them myself for... Um, these classes, I found them, even though I'm using a lot of liquid adhesive most of the time now, I found them to be very helpful for doing my um, classes because they make it so fast. So I'm just going to put one um, line down the middle on this. I actually forgot to stick this in here. I'm going to rip it up just a tad because the glue is so good. and go ahead and stick that down and then re-stick just a little bit of glue right here. All right, now to pull, before I put anything else, I'm gonna be pulling the chevron in that I made and um, I'm just gonna trim it. I want it to be a little tone on tone. And see, this is what I was gonna show you. I left that there strategically, see, to put this here. And before I glue anything down, I'm going to take, I have a little shout out to Tim Holtz who actually sent me a personal email to help me to replace. I had um, been gifted some Amazon funds, went in, tried to um, buy one of these the first time, bought one, got it, that was um, a couple of months ago and I could not figure out why everyone's was working so wonderfully and mine was just jammed up with staples. I went through all 100 of the staples that came with it and um, just jam, jam, a big mess. and. No questions asked, just a picture of my stapler to show that I had it. I said, I don't really have the funds to mail it back to you. <clears throat> and um, it was replaced for me. So I just felt um, like Tim Holtz, you know, you should buy his stuff because they are honest and um, just excellent customer service. 
So before I glue this down, I'm just going to line that up really well and put two staples in here to hold that down. And you can see then it's an angle across. For the other end, I'm going to cut it where it lines up with the paper here. Just like this. So you can see the layer. Now, after I'm done with um, showing you how everything else is going to go on, I'm going to lift these. I'm not going to glue this anymore and put the scrap dots like I was sharing before just to make sure it stays. I don't know if you can see, it's really lifting off the page right there. I'd like it to be like that. Oh, the ads. The ads are really weird. I, I wish... Um, they had different ads. I do have to say that. Okay, so I'm going to layer this one right on top. Just like that. And this one I meant to put underneath, so I'm going to quickly slip it underneath. It gives me just a second. Don't try for more than a second, though. Once it's done, it's done. I'm going to cut this. Look, this is what I do so often. When you're not going to see the bottom section, I'll just cut by hand. Perfect. So I'm just slipping in just a little bit of green. My photos have a lot of green in them, so I'm just playing with the fact that I have all of that green and just pulling a little more into it. And you're not even going to see all of it, but I just want it there for me to see. And you can see kind of why I wanted the chevron. I just have another piece here that matches First, I'll put this picture down here. Just like that with the chevron peeking out and kind of completing over here. This um, piece here is not going to be um, put down with um, the quick fix because I'm going to be using the quick dry and I'm going to make a pocket behind this piece and that will actually be a space um, to put an extra bit of journaling. If you can see this piece of paper says, let's see if I can keep it really still. guess maybe you can't see because it's kind of a tone on tone but I'll take a picture it says description um, so I'm gonna put something a little bit behind that so this is how I'm gonna do this I'm gonna just put one little strip I make sure to leave um, before I do this about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch from the edge just giving it a little space because it's going to seep a little bit when you put it on but I'm only gluing here I'm leaving all of this exposed and the top exposed to put something inside and since this is safe for my photos as we learned a few minutes ago I'm okay I'm gonna be putting it on my paper my picture but I feel okay about that just gonna line it up here and then I'm gonna grab my glue spreader. And just cause I'm on the picture, I'm gonna push this way. Here, I'm just gonna make sure it's glued down. All right, so that is probably all set. And then again, I'm gonna put this one down now.
So now I'll be able to stick another one of those tags down inside. I haven't decided which one yet. Um, I also have these three strips that I'll be placing along the side here. Just like that. And this flower as well. I haven't quite decided where I'll put it. Um, then my long title will be coming down my page. Yeah, it, I really think it's hard to see, so I'm going to put some close-ups um, on my blog today. But that's just how you would use a chevron, how to make a folded chevron, and the flower, the burlap flower. And hopefully it will come together as a nice boy page with still some of the little touches I like in my scrapbooking right now. Flowers, chevrons. Are there any questions? Where am I doing the title? So I'll show you. It's going to say um, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. So it'll be the whole length on top and underneath this photo. Hopefully. Hopefully it comes out exactly like I'm picturing it in my head. And I'll add some mist and some paint and some stitching. And I will be putting that up on my blog today. And um, maybe showing a few more flowers that you can make. And yes, I have been working on my titles too. And trying to make them more than just cute or sweet <laughs> just so cute I don't know I just tend to stick on the same types of titles so I'm working on making them more intentional and more um, keyed into what what I'm really scrapbooking our life my kids and um, what I want them to remember Especially now that I know Helmar sticks for life. <laughs> I want it to matter for a lifetime. So I'm going to stop recording now, but I just really thank you. I, I know the viewers were low probably because of the holiday and I didn't get to publicize as much as I wanted. But thank you for those who came and thank you for those who watch. And I hope I was able to share something today that you can learn. And... Um, something fun to try, something that's inspiring, and please show me if you try them because I love to see everyone's work. Have a great week. Enjoy the rest of um, this week. It's Friday, so it's almost done, and have a wonderful weekend.